What is Sermon and how does it help those with autism? Here's a warning. This information is not for beginners. So if your child is not on a special diet, then this is really not for you. This is information from a clinical trial. So this is from 2017. It's cutting edge. This is not FDA approved for autism. The mechanism of action that I'll explain in a few minutes is commonly addressed in other ways. So please work with a knowledgeable functional medicine practitioner and let's learn about sermon. Here it is. It is quite a large molecule, as you can see on the right there. And one of its best studied actions is an inhibitor of purinergic signaling, which I'll explain in a few moments. This drug, Ceramin, was developed in 1916, so it has been around for well over 100 years, and currently it's used to treat African sleeping sickness. So why Ceramin? Great question. Autism is heterogeneous, right? You've probably heard the expression, if you've seen one person with autism, you've seen one person with autism. However, scientists postulate that core symptoms have similar root cause. And they came up with this hypothesis called cell danger hypothesis. And so basically what that says is regardless if the stress or the danger to the person was caused by a virus or a bacterium or genetic forms of mitochondrial disease or neurodevelopmental disorders with complex gene environment, pathogenic mechanisms, basically that just means regardless of where the stress is coming from, they postulate that it all traces back to the mitochondria. So these scientists are saying, listen, it doesn't matter how the person presents, right? Everyone is going to present differently with different symptoms. There is one root cause, this is their hypothesis, and their hypothesis is that there's cell danger involved. So if you understand how the cell reacts when it's under danger and you can optimize that, then you'll have a better handle on optimizing the rest of the biology in the person. So what do mitochondria do, right? You've probably heard of it. You've probably heard how important they are, and in some cases, how fragile they are. Mitochondria, they are involved in innate immunity, so that's the immunity that you're born with, and they're also involved in response to stress via regulation of certain molecules. And this biology can get complex real quick, but in a nutshell, that's what mitochondria does. Molecules such as ATP are also co-released with neurotransmitters such as glutamate, dopamine, and serotonin. So you have mitochondria who use molecules such as ATP. ATP is about energy. There's a high concentration of ATP in the cell. When the cell becomes injured, obviously that ATP can exit the cell and Typically, the amounts of ATP outside of the cell are quite low. So when a cell gets injured and ATP then can be outside of the cell, the body can recognize this as an injury, as a stress, as danger. And molecules such as ATP, they're also co-released with neurotransmitters. So this is where you can start to see some differentiation in symptoms for people based upon the hypothesis that um, the cell danger is the root cause. So this is what mitochondria do. And Sermon inhibits this stress response signaling. So when we want to tell the body, oh no, listen, you're not in danger, Sermon does that. So there was a clinical trial done. It was completed and published in 2017 about low-dose Sermon in autism. And it was called the Sermon Autism Treatment 1. And it was double-blind, placebo-controlled. Those are gold standards for any type of clinical trial. And this study was a translational pilot study for safety and activity. So phase 1, phase 2, they're usually on the small side. First, you've got to test safety to make sure things are still safe. And then you want to see some activity. So that was the goal of this clinical trial. So there were 10 male subjects with autism, and they were ages of 5 through 14 years. And what they did was they paired 
each of that 10. So you have five pairs and they were paired by age and IQ and autism severity. You were trying to have that pair be as similar as possible. And then they randomized and um, each of the pair received either uh, intravenous infusion of ceramin or saline. So again, it was placebo controlled. So that means the people who were getting the placebo were getting the saline. And this is an intravenous drug, so it is delivered through infusion. Here's the results. There were no serious adverse events, so that's the first thing about safety. Is this safe? There were some rashes, some headaches, peripheral neuropathy, things like that, but there were no serious adverse events. There was an improvement in the ADAS2 scores for the ceramine group. In the placebo group, there was no change. That's what we would expect. Secondary outcomes also showed improvements in language and social interactions, as well as decreased restrictive or repetitive behaviors. So the results, they were positive. You saw an improvement in the group that had the sermon. You saw no change in the placebo, so there was no placebo effect. There were no adverse health events, so that shows that there is some um, safety involved in sermon at this particular dose in the autism population and there were also secondary outcomes reported by parents showing improvements in a variety of things. However, parents reported that after sermon treatment the rate of language, social behavioral and developmental improvements continued to increase for three weeks. So you have one infusion and the parents for three weeks after that, the parents were starting to see improvements. However, it gradually decreased back towards baseline over the next three weeks. So there was an improvement for three weeks. And then after that three weeks, things were starting to go back to the way they were before treatment. So they were getting to baseline. So sermon, even though it showed activity, right, in improving certain symptoms for those with autism, when it was stopped, the improvement stopped, and there was a return to the baseline. Conclusion, the safety and activity of low-dose ceramin showed promise as a novel approach to treatment of autism in this small study. And as a parent, it's important to remember that a, you're probably doing so much already for your child. If you're watching this video, you're doing a good job. You're looking for answers. You're finding things out. So just take a moment to celebrate and acknowledge how much work you are doing. And B, sermon is not, it's not the golden ticket. It, it doesn't um, change things for the long term. It's just showing some promise. So there's many different ways that mitochondria can be influenced. There's many different ways to ensure healthy cells and to ensure that cells aren't being damaged and in danger. So sermon is not the only answer. I know it gets talked about um, from time to time, and it, it certainly showed promise, but remember, these changes were not long-term changes. And that's what you want for your child. You want long-term changes. You want the, your child to start smiling and keep smiling. <laughs> so just remember that with, with sermon. And here is the reference for the clinical trial in case you're interested.